Hello, my name is Ryan Norris. I'm an assistant professor at New Mexico Tech, and today I'll be talking about my research using high resolution imaging via optical interferometry to study red supergiants, and also ask you all some questions about how the optical interferometry community can better serve all your needs and how we can better work together. My dissertation at Georgia State University used the char array and the Merck now called Merck X combiner to look at these objects in the H band. So particularly uh, in the low opacity regions, looking toward the, the surface of the, these objects to see how features change over time, particularly on the time scale of years. AZ SIG was one object for which there was existing data starting in 2011. And then from 2015 onward to this day, I started looking at AZ-SIG to see how its surface was changing over time. In all these images, this little white circle in the right-hand corner, it's called the beam size, gives you an idea of the, uh, the resolution of the image. And then I also looked at SUPER in 2015, 2016 onward. I have a paper that I've submitted about AZ-SIG, which looks at these long-term changes and should be available soon, I hope. I'm currently working on a paper about SUPER, and in addition to looking at its long-term changes, what I'm looking at is ways of testing the repeatability and reliability of the images, so, so better understanding whether a feature is really a feature, whether if I look at the star in one night, and then the next night, do I get a similar image, assuming the data coverage is um, same in quantity. I'm also working with a handful of New Mexico Tech students to develop some new image reconstruction techniques, including some based on machine learning, using knowledge from existing models of these objects. And then I've proposed for a short-term survey of AZSIG looking for six months from May through October. I've obtained data in May, and I'm waiting to hear back from the results of the proposal for the August through October period. But hopefully, pending successful um, proposal. We'll have data looking at the short-term changes on the surface of a star, and perhaps this, is a, this will be a way to test the small variations, such as the ones that are predicted to exist at the last hundreds of days. Another thing that's coming soon is a study of the fundamental parameters for 19 red supergiants. I'm working with undergraduate Keith Lucero on that. So I have data from my graduate studies on uh, 19 red supergiants. So we have angular resolution, uh, angular diameters of these objects and near simultaneous specs, near infrared inf um, spectroscopy of those objects as well. So we'll get a good idea of the parameters of these stars. Uh, unfortunately, most of these stars don't have very good imaging quality data just because the coverage, the amount of nights that I looked at these objects wasn't high enough or the conditions weren't great. But there are a few, such as RS per, that look pretty promising. So we may get additional images of red supergiants across the HR diagram from that survey. And then something I'm particularly really excited about is the Magdalena Ridge Observatory Interferometer, which will eventually have 10 telescopes on a movable configuration. So this will let us scale, study red supergiants on a variety of scales, including scales that are unattainable at the moment using um, the char array, just because the char array's uh, configurations are such that you can't look at, for instance, Betelgeuse at the smallest scales. We can look at Betelgeuse at higher, at the higher um, scales, the higher frequency scales. That gives us give us information about these small features, but we can't get the diameter because the baselines of char are currently too long to get the full diameter of the star. And so that is a problem when you want to image. But MRI will resolve this by having this movable configuration. And so what I did was I took a snapshot from Andre Kiyavasa's paper, one of his papers, and I simulated an observation with that 10 telescope MRI. And this is what we get. So we get an unprecedented picture of red supergiants that will let us look at these large features and also these small features. And I'm really excited about what will come from this. But I also want to know what can high resolution imaging and in particular optical interferometry do for y'all? Do you want longer baselines, which will let us look at, for instance, uh, higher resolution scales, particularly on the smaller, more distance objects? What about shorter baselines, which will open up 
as I mentioned before, these nearby rare supergiants that are understood really well because they've been studied for years, uh, but have been challenging for northern hemisphere uh, arrays at the moment. What about a higher spectral resolution in our instruments? And what wavelength ranges in particular would you like to see? Would you like to see a broader coverage of objects? There's only a handful of objects that have been studied in detail at the moment using optical interferometry. Would you like to see more, perhaps a wide range of spectral types? And then what about observations contemporaneous with other techniques, such as radio astronomy or high resolution spectroscopy, perhaps a uh, survey that uses a variety of methods to look at some object in depth over a period of time. These are all questions I want to hear from you about. And then I would love to work with some of you uh, to share my knowledge and expertise with optical infrastructure imaging uh, to link up and get an idea of how we can better understand these beautiful objects. Thank you for your time.